All right, are you ready to get into the word? I think I'm ready. All right, Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. Everybody say, here we go. Here we go. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All right, we'll pray right there. Father, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we're excited to get into your word today. And Lord, as we continue to just lay this foundation, I know that lives are being transformed, they're being changed, and we thank you for that. So Father, I ask that you would just have your way in this place. I know as I release what you've put on the inside of me, as it changes me, it changes everybody in the room. It goes forth like an arrow and pierces each heart. We thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for the growth that I see in this church, the numerical growth, but also, most importantly, the spiritual growth. Everybody is growing, and I thank you for that. We just praise you today. Have your way in Jesus' name. If you love him, shout amen. 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 You can be seated. So what we've been doing is we've been looking at our responses to what grace has made available, and we learned that we respond out of relationship. That was the first week. And then we have to know, the second week, we have to know that God really does love us. Just say that. Say, God loves me. And when we are confident in the fact that it's done, week number three, we rest. And then it produces effortless, effortless faith because we just we let him do it, right? We just rest in that, knowing that it's done. And last week, we started looking at the finished work. So if my faith is a positive response, then what am I responding to? I have to know what the finished work of Jesus is because that's what I'm responding to, the finished work of Jesus on the cross. So to break it down even further, I have to believe that Jesus took care of the sin issue once and for all, Amen. That's what we looked at last week. Jesus paid it all. Say that with me. Jesus paid it all. In fact, we looked at it last week. He was an overpayment for the sin debt. So awesome. So you have to know this. This is part of your foundation. You have to understand the sin issue has been taken care of once and for all. Say this with me. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. So that's grace 101. This is the foundation. You have to know that you're forgiven. If you're still wondering and you think that every time you mess up and sin that you fall out of relationship with God and then you're back in, there's nowhere for him to, to place the blessings, right? Everybody say established in righteousness. That means that once I am saved, I am saved. Man, I could preach right there, but I'm going to keep going. You have to have this nailed down if you want to receive everything God has for you. I say this from experience because I believed in prosperity, I believed in healing, I believed in everything, but my spiritual life looked like this. Back and forth. I was saved till Monday morning. Oh, man, I messed up. All right, Lord, forgive me. And then it took like three days for me to, okay, I think I'm back in his good graces. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I was even taught that, that sometimes it takes some time to get, and that's, that's not right. So I want to expose the enemy. Is that all right? What does he tell us? He says, you're really not forgiven. God really doesn't love you. He, he may love Todd, may love Spook, but he doesn't love you. You've messed up too much to be forgiven. You can't be totally forgiven. I know what you did. And he's known as the father of lies, right? The accuser of the brethren. The Bible says there's no truth in him. So I want you to get this. If you weren't really forgiven, wouldn't he tell you that you were? Are you thinking... So you would go on thinking that, hey, I'm in the clear, I'm on my way, way to heaven, and he'd sit back laughing and say, you're really on your way to hell. You can believe you're forgiven all you want. That's good. Did you catch it? I want to say it again. This is so important. If you, if you weren't really forgiven, wouldn't he tell you that you were? So you'd sit back and end up in hell because you believe the lie that you're really forgiven. But what does he say? You're not really forgiven. You're not good enough. He's the accuser of the brethren. He tells on himself. He says, you're not righteous. You're not holy. You're not redeemed. Oh, you're forgiven until you sin. You're righteous until you have a bad thought. Then you fall out of relationship with God. Are you catching this? Now he's put your forgiveness, your righteousness, your holiness back on you and your behavior. What's he doing? Taking you back to the law. Did you catch that? That right there ought to be an eye-opener for the believer. Did you catch it this morning? So my question to you is, how is your faith responding to the fact that your sin debt is paid in full? Do you believe it? Are you living like it's done, like it's taken care of? So what I want to do today is we're going to go deeper into the finished work. We'll go to verse 3 now of Psalm 103. Who forgives all your iniquities? That's where we stopped last week. Just say, I'm forgiven. Now, for this week, who heals all your diseases? 
There's that word all. Just shout all. All. So check it out. All your sins are forgiven. All your sickness and disease is healed. That's the finished work. You have to know that healing has already been provided for you. So I'm not trying to work God up with my faith. I'm not trying to get his attention so that he will heal, heal me. I'm trying to get my words out this morning. Are you with me? Yes. I'm not trying to get his attention. The healing has already been supplied. That's the finished work. So what I want to do is show you exactly what the word of God says. And we talk about this all the time, but let's go there. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5, or, just, or maybe just 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He was wounded for our transgressions. Now when we sin, because the law is in place, it becomes a transgression. Because the law was there. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's our immoral behavior. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. Jesus was punished so you and I could receive peace. You can walk around with peace in your heart, in your mind, all over your life. He was punished for that so that we could receive it. The chastisement, the punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are what? Healed. In verse 4, we don't have it up there, the word, the word griefs is actually sickness and sorrows is pain. So he bore on the cross in his body your sickness and your pain. He bore that. 1 Peter 2.24. Whenever I'm praying, I use these. These are very familiar to us. Who himself bore our sins in his own what? He carried your sins in his body on the tree. That we having died to sins might live for what? Righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And that's why I always point that out. What is it? Past tense. So now the question is, how am I responding to the fact that it's already done? If faith is my positive response, how am I responding to the finished work of Jesus? This is for mature believers. Are you ready? Are you responding with frustration because you're not healed yet? Are you responding with anger because you don't see anything happening in your body yet? How are you responding? Our first response needs to be diving into the Word of God and see what it says. Amen? Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I have to continually stay in His Word so that it becomes more real to me than my circumstances. This Word, the Word of God, has to be more real than what I'm facing right now. How do we do that? We come to church and we hear, but we also get in on our, for ourselves. Amen? Amen? So important. Mark 5, 25 and 26. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the, over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. So this woman had been suffering for 12 years. She spent everything she had, and she just kept getting worse. So here's what I want you to see. She's not just sick. Now she's broke. She's exhausted all of her resources. She doesn't have any more doctors to go to. She doesn't have any more money to spend. She's literally at rock bottom. Now watch what happens. Verse 27. When she what? When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. When she heard about Jesus, what did she hear? Jesus can heal you. Right? Faith comes by hearing. hearing. When she heard about Jesus, so now her faith is beginning to stir. She hears about this Jesus guy that goes around, he's healing all the sick. When she heard that Jesus could heal her, what did she do? She responded with a faith response. Faith is a positive response. Look at her response. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. I want, we're breaking this down. Are you doing all right? When she heard about Jesus, her faith was stirred. Faith comes by hearing. And then her positive response to the faith she just received on the inside, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. See the positive response? <laughs> Do you see it? Yes. She acted upon the believing that was in her heart. Some people act first trying to build up their faith, trying to work up their faith, but this is the order. When she heard, faith comes by hearing, then she reaches out and touches him. Because some people say, well, you need to speak it, you need to confess it, but it doesn't do any good if you don't believe. Amen. I'm not trying to work my faith up. 
I have to believe in the finished work of Jesus and I respond to that with my faith. So I want you to notice the order. When she heard about Jesus, now look at verse 28. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now you, I want you to catch this. Look at your neighbor and say, this is good stuff. It is. <laughs> it really is. I want you to catch this. First she heard about Jesus. Here comes the faith. Because why? Faith comes by hearing. And then she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So what is her positive response? She spoke it out loud. You're catching this. She said it. She spoke it out loud. But why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. She believed first in her heart, and then she spoke it out of her mouth. This is a simple illustration I think will help you. But I don't have to go around confessing that I'm married to Julie. We're just married. The more that I confess it doesn't mean we're more married. Are you with me? I confess we're married because it's a done deal. We're married, all right? I don't go around saying we're married. I know we're, I believe we're married. <laughs> do you do that, married couples? I hope, I hope not. You just know you're married. I confess from the reality that we're married. I know it's done. I know it's finished. I'm declaring what I know in my heart. Somebody say amen. I'm preaching. Don't miss this. This is huge because some people teach that the more you confess it, eventually it will show up. I can confess I'm married to anybody else. It doesn't make it true. I'm confessing. <laughs> I'm confessing out of the reality that we're married. There's a fundamental reality. We are married. I'm saying we're married. I don't say we're married, we're married, we're married. Okay, now we're married. That's the way a lot of people approach the spiritual. If I just say it enough times, it'll happen. No, you have to believe in the finished work and then speak it. Somebody say amen. Because if we don't believe it and we're not speaking from that foundation, they're just words. So how do I know that we're married? We have the marriage license and the pastor's signature, right? And she puts up with me too, praise God. <laughs> so here's what I want you to see. <laughs> Thank you for those who clapped. I will talk to you after church. <laughs> Back in my office, I'm just kidding. Here's what I want you to catch. The paperwork makes it legal. So when I say Julie and I are married, I'm speaking with the backing of legal documents. If something were to happen and we have to prove that we're married, we get the marriage license. Okay, are you catching this? Yes. I don't care what you say about me, we're still married. I don't care what you think, we're married, right? So I don't have to work myself up and try to convince me that we're married. I want you to get this. This book is your legal document. You are able to speak with power and authority because of what is in here. I can say we're married. We've got the marriage license to prove it. You can say I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free, I'm saved because of this right here, amen? That's all you have to do. That's how you fight the devil. You say, it is legal. Because by his stripes, we just read it. By his stripes, I'm already healed. So good. I may not feel like it, but that's what this says. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. There are sometimes you may not feel like you're married, but you're still married. <laughs> I'm glad we're going to your house for lunch today. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You can't go by feelings. Somebody say amen. Amen. If there's ever a question about our marriage, we go to the legal documents. If there's ever a question about your healing, your salvation, your prosperity, you go right here. Yes. Amen. You stand upon the legality of Scripture. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So first she heard, and then she said. Now let's go to verse 29. You guys doing all right? All right. Just say immediately. 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 The fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. I want you to get this. She heard, she said, and then she felt. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt. felt. So she heard, faith comes by hearing. And then she said her positive response was to speak what she believed in her heart. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. And finally, she felt. Notice that her feeling came last. A lot of people look for the feeling up front. 
They look for the feeling first, but we live by faith, not by feeling. So here's my question for mature believers. Are you speaking what you believe? Are you speaking what you believe? You're receiving a lot of word. If you come to this church, you're full of the word. Look at your neighbor and say, you're full of it. <laughs> Welcome to freedom. We just have a good time. I'm just messing with you. you. If you come here, you're full of the word of God, I promise you. But now what are you going to do? Are you going to just receive it? And go, or are you going to release it? What do you believe? What are you speaking? Amen? How are you responding to what you're hearing, what you're receiving? That lets you know where your faith is. There are a lot of people who know the word of God, but their faith isn't in the right place to respond to it. It's not about quoting scripture. It's not about throwing scriptures at a problem. Do you really believe it? Because when you get in trouble with the enemy, that's when we know what we really believe. Amen? So I'm not responding to get. I'm not speaking to get. I'm speaking because I already have it. I already possess it. Do you see the difference? I'm not saying we're married so that we will stay married or we will will be married. We're married, so now I say we're married. I'm not saying I'm by his stripes I'm healed so that I can receive it. I believe I'm already healed, so now I just speak what's already there. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, people have twisted this through the years to where you can just, you go around and you just confess it, confess, give whatever you want. That's not it at all. I have to get into the word and now believe. Faith comes by hearing and then I speak. I may not feel it yet, She felt in her body. That was the last thing is she felt the healing come. She believed, she spoke it, and then she felt the healing. If you're waiting on the feeling, you may have it in the wrong order because your faith is what activates it. Are you catching this this morning? This is good stuff. That's the finished work. If it's finished and I truly believe it in my heart, then I will act like it's finished. I want you to say this. Say, I'm saved. I'm healed, I'm redeemed, I'm prospered, I'm forgiven, I'm blessed, I'm free. That feels different when it comes from your heart, doesn't it? Big time. If it's not coming from your heart, those are just words. Let's, let's back up, let's say that again. I want you, to, from your heart, you ready? Say, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm redeemed, I'm prospered, I'm forgiven, I'm blessed. I'm free. free. You know what you're doing? You're releasing power. Every time that you speak, if you believe it in your heart, you are now releasing power. When Jesus went about healing, he was releasing what was on the inside. I want you to catch this. When he went around forgiving sins, he was releasing what was on the inside. So here's my question to you. What's on the inside of you? Let's check it out. Next verse, Romans 8, 11. This is the New Living Translation. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, what? And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. The Spirit of God is now, has taken up residence on the inside of the believer. And I want you to think about this. The same Holy Spirit that quickened Jesus' dead body, dead for three days, boom, back to life, is now that much power is on the inside of the believer. Wow. That's a lot of power. The Spirit of God is on the inside of you. So when you speak the Word of God, you aren't just saying something, you're actually releasing the Holy Spirit to go to work. You're releasing power. Your words have weight. Jesus never wasted a word. He, he couldn't, I'm just throw this out there, he couldn't talk like, we, that just kills me. He'd, choop, he'd be done. He never said an idle word. He only said what he heard the Father say. He only did what he saw the Father do. Because he knew, he knew that when he was speaking, he was releasing the Holy Spirit that was on the inside, the power, boom. Dunamis power. In the Greek, the word dunamis is where we get the word dynamite. You have dynamite power on the inside of you. So when you come forward for prayer and we say, be healed in the name of Jesus, boom. It's not because Joe yelled. In fact, we don't even have to do that. Just say, be healed in the name of Jesus. And the backing of heaven comes up behind that. Because I believe in my heart, I'm confessing the finished work of Jesus. Just like the marriage license, it's done. So I can say that. Say, be healed. Boom. Here comes the healing. Does that make sense? Just say, it's finished. So how is your faith responding to the presence of God on the inside? 
If it is finished, are you speaking like it's finished? Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. We'll wrap it up with this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. <clears throat> in God. This actually got misinterpreted when it came to the English language. It's actually have the faith of God. So you need to have God, the God kind of faith. All right, verse 23. Red letters. I tell you the truth that you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. When I say we're married, I have no doubt. I don't have to work myself up, right? That's the way it needs to be with the word of God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, what mountain is standing in your way this morning? Sickness? Maybe it's a mountain of debt. Maybe it's relationship problems, marriage problems. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will what? Happen. It will happen. Why would Jesus tell us this if it can't be done? He's not just trying to fill up pages in a book. He's letting us know, believer, I modeled it for you. This is what it looks like for a man, 100% man, 100% God, to walk through this life filled with the Holy Spirit. His ministry didn't start until the Holy Spirit was dwelling on the inside, right? He says, this is what you can do. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Now, verse 24. I tell you, you can pray for anything. Pray for what? Anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Verse 23 says that I can speak and command things. I want to be very clear, but I don't command God. The people have been confused with this. Well, Joe, when, when do I command the thing? When do, do I command God? No, we don't command God. It says you can pray, you can ask for anything. That's when we go to God, we ask God. But whenever we come forward to pray, I don't ask cancer to leave. I don't ask a tumor to shrink. I command it in the name of Jesus. That's the mountain that's standing in my way at that moment. Are you seeing it? It says, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. So when I'm talking to God, I don't command him, I ask him. Does that make sense? Let's back it up to 22 real quick. Then Jesus said to his disciples, have the faith of God, verse 23. The God kind of faith. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Faith comes by hearing. So I have to keep hearing and receiving the word of God and get in on my own and read. If you need healing, you need to be reading healing scriptures over and over until now it's just, because it just spills out. Like I said last week, you get cut and you bleed the gospel. Anytime the devil, you know what I said whenever my nose got clogged and my ears got clogged? By his stripes, I'm healed. Amen? Now here, I can't wait on the feeling. I have enough faith. I have the word. What's my positive response? I speak it. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Are you getting this? Then the feeling comes. If I wait for the feeling to confess it, I'll never say it. See how we get it out of order? And I don't walk around just saying it, trying to get it to manifest. I believe. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Does that make sense? All right, go ahead and stand to your feet this morning. We're going to stop right there for today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What I'm showing you is some of the power and the authority we have as believers. You have to know that. You have to know. Jesus said this. I want to read it again. I want you to get this in your heart. This has changed so many lives. I tell you the truth. Now just say your name. Let's try it again. I tell you the truth. There we go. This is the way I read the Bible. I tell you the truth. Jesus is sitting down. We're just having a conversation. Joe, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you, Joe, you have to really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. That's how you read the Bible. Or else we just read it and go, man, that was really good. I had goosebumps and tingly. That was cool. 
No, he is speaking to you, believer. He's saying that the problem that you're facing right now, whatever you're going through in your life, you could be speaking to it and commanding it to, to move. You can speak to the sickness. You can speak to the cancer. I command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. I just speak healing into your body in Jesus' name. That's how it happens. Why? Because this makes it legal. It's not because I hate cancer. It's because of this. I can get all in my emotions and nothing will happen. But when I stand upon the word of God, it has to move. I tell you the truth. You can say to this, whatever you're facing, Cancer, sickness, disease, relationships, whatever. May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen. Have no doubt in your heart. Just say, I believe. believe. That's why every week when you come here, I always reinforce, we have to believe. You have to believe. Once you believe and your faith is on 10, you can speak to the mountain and it'll move. What happens is throughout the week as we run into the enemy, and we're around people, coworkers, and family sometimes, and they're speaking such negativity, it starts to get on us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you have to now get into the Word and allow the Word to cleanse you, regenerate you, regenerate you, and then begin to speak it. So that's why it's important, don't miss church. It's not so we can fill up the room. I don't care about that. I want you to be as strong as you can possibly be. Amen. I want you to be transformed. Does that make sense? So here's, I'm going to leave you with this question. What are you speaking? What are you speaking? Because what the enemy wants you to do is hear what's going on in the world and begin to speak that. Oh, man, it's getting bad. It's rough. Man, I don't know if we'll ever get out of this mess. Oh my, what are you doing? Your words have weight. You just... That's what I say. God's got this. Look at your neighbors and say, God's got this. He's got this. So I'm not supposed to be living in stress and fear. I rest in the finished work saying no matter what happens, it's out of my control, but no matter what happens, I'm good. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Amen. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to feed you. You got to know that. Amen. All right, I'm done. Let's pray.